the nick of time. What does that make us? Big damn heroes, sir. Ain't we just? Hello, everyone. I'd like to apologize for the break, but now that summer's over, I'll be getting back to making videos more often. First, I'd like to thank everyone who subscribed. We're now over 100 subscribers, and that is awesome. Thank you. So to get back into the swing, I thought I'd address some of the viewer comments that were left in my absence. The first comment I'd like to address is about my brown coat flag intro slide. Many viewers have commented that it's some sort of a satanic pentagram that indicates that I'm working for the devil or the Illuminati or some such secret bullshit. Seriously? What century do you live in? This is the flag of the Army of Independence, or as they are nicknamed, the Browncoats. It's a completely fictional flag created for the completely fictional television show Firefly, created by the incomparable but totally real Joss Whedon. It doesn't have any magical powers. I chose it because of the obvious connection to my username. I chose the name Browncoat because I happen to like the philosophy expressed by the Browncoats. They were the plucky underdogs fighting for the common man and individual egalitarian freedom against the forced unification imposed by the vast and oppressive Alliance regime. As Firefly's hero Malcolm Reynolds says, we've done the impossible and that makes us mighty. The brown coat struggle is especially symbolic here because the chemtrail faithful fail to see that they are being manipulated into believing a lie when the truth about environmental pollution is right there in plain sight. But that truth challenges the powerful status quo. So forget the hocus pocus superstitious nonsense. Besides, I'm an atheist and a skeptic so that dog don't hunt as they say. Next, another common theme I've been hearing is, well, something happened in the past, so this must be true as well. For example, it's known that government organizations conducted bioweapons experiments on civilian populations in the USA and other countries during the Cold War. Clearly, this is horrifying and inexcusable, and it's our responsibility to remain vigilant. However, just because the experiments took place in the past does not mean that any are being conducted today. And, to look at the historical precedents, you're comparing apples to oranges. The Cold War experimentation was small-scale compared to the scope of the current myth and centered on bioweapons, not chemical weapons. Everything connected with it would have to be proportionally larger and, as I pointed out in my other videos, the logistics become impossible to conceal. The next most common recurring comment is, it's geoengineering. See my video debunking what in the world are they spraying. The geoengineer who they claim to have admitted that the geoengineering is happening really said no such thing at all. He was badly taken out of context and frankly I'd be pissed off if I were him. It's true that various geoengineering schemes are being researched as strategies to curb global warming, including patents for various devices. However, there's simply no evidence that any of them are being carried out. Again, if for the no other reason, the logistics of any global scheme are simply too complex to hide. The same goes for weather modification. Weather modification is a small scale and short term, intended to change rainfall in a particular area. Again, anything on a large scale would be difficult to hide and the question would become to what end. If the intent is to create favorable weather patterns, the Texas drought of this year is clear evidence of its failure. If the opposite is true, then who would benefit from damaging the planet that they have to live on as well? And for the final nuttiest claim of all, are the people who claim that big agribusiness is behind it. As I've shown in my other videos, such an undertaking would be very, very expensive, on the order of hundreds of billions of dollars. Agribusinesses are, by and large, publicly traded companies, so an expenditure of that magnitude would stand out to shareholders like a red flag. Unless you're conjecturing that there's a vastly wealthy mega-villain whose private company would not be subject to public scrutiny? Someone like this guy? Who does number two work for? Finally, there's a user who has publicly challenged me to a debate. In the words of Dr. Horrible, Dude, you are not my nemesis. Never minding the fact that his challenge is to an elected official on his website, which I am not. 
To meet his criteria for a debate, he expects me to shell out a minimum of $3,000 in various expenses, including renting a venue capable of seating 2,300 people in his hometown. I would have to pay my travel expenses to California, and I would have to secure a media sponsor to broadcast it. And that's leaving off the money I'd lose from taking off work to travel out to California in the first place. For this investment, he would produce the following list of evidence, most of which I've already debunked in my videos. Oh, and he'll pay me the princely sum of $500. Dude, get over yourself. Seriously. It's not that I'm opposed to a debate. I've previously agreed to appear on a live streaming debate for a podcast out of Denver. Oddly, though, when I agreed to appear, assuming I could make the date and time work, they vanished and failed to provide me with any of the details. So, Jeffco, if you want to debate, I'll be glad to do so via the internet on whatever live event service you would agree to, on two conditions. One, that we agree on a date and a time in advance, and two, that we both publish videos announcing the date and time in advance on our channels so that our subscribers have the opportunity to attend. Send me a PM and we can discuss the details. Now, since he published his list, let's take a look at the so-called evidence he threatens to present. Number one and two are most likely contrails he's misinterpreted yet again. Number four, I've addressed in debunking the mother load. The pollution that he's claiming to have evidence for is coming from coal burning power plants. Number seven, he claims to have a whistleblower. Is this guy likely to appear at the debate? What's his credibility? Just because he claims to be an expert doesn't make him so. Remember, Prison Planet's expert Rosalind turned out to be a qualified tractor operator and tennis coach, not an at atmospheric scientist at all. As for number three and eight, let's see the evidence. This leaves number five. In reviewing patents linked by other commenters, I've run across several so-called chemtrail patents. However, if the individuals had simply read beyond the keywords at the top, they would have discovered that the items are intended for such things as chafe or anti-missile defense and target drones. They are not at all linked to spreading nefarious death clouds from phantom aircraft. If I'm your mission, Shepard, best give it up. You're welcome on my boat. God inked. <laughs> 